the old silver standard Winchester silver tap and what I'm testing today is 357 Magnum versus 45 auto in short barrels so our 357 Magnum is a 145 grain silver tip that is rated at 1290 feet per second. Our 45 auto is a 185 grain silver tap hollow point rated at 1000 feet per second. Obviously those velocities are through longer barrels, but I'm gonna test these in my short barrels today. So I'm gonna use my Taurus 605 to test the 357 Magnum as a two inch barrel and my M&P 45 shield with a 3.3 inch barrel to test the 45 ACP. Both those actually have about exactly the same amount of uh, barrel travel in there. So it's a very fair, um, very fair guns to test those in. So we're gonna see what we get with these. So I'm gonna go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy I get at the same time. Then I'm gonna do my 10% clear ballistic gel test. So I'm gonna go into plain 10% clear ballistics, no denim in the way or anything like that. We can clog a hollow point. And we'll see if we get some hollow point expansion with its best potential with no denim and see how it does in plain gel. Then after that, I'm gonna move on to doing more of a real world simulation where I'm gonna have four layers of sweatshirt material on this first three inch piece that represents hitting a pectoral muscle followed by a quarter inch MDF that represents hitting ribs or sternum. 16 more inches of clear ballistics and another quarter inch MDF at the back to represent hitting back ribs. Clear ballistics is roughly a half representation of the density of flesh, so three inches and 16 inches, and an actual living target would be more like an inch and a half and eight inches. So we're trying to keep these bullets inside of this first block here, inside the back rib simulation, but they can go maybe two, three inches past that, and it would still be acceptable that they would not pass through an average size individual. So we'll do a plain clear ballistic best potential shot, then move on to doing more of a real world simulation and shot with those, and then I will shoot at the steel target to see what kind of practical action and shoot a billion get these. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up we have our 357 Magnum 145 grain silver tap hollow point. We were rated at 1290 feet per second. That's likely through a four inch barrel. So we're gonna see some velocity drop in the snub, but let's see what I can get in my two inch barrel here. I am gonna fire single action over the chronograph because you know that is a very sensitive piece of equipment that I don't want to hit. So I don't want to incorporate a flinch, which I do sometimes still get because I have rheumatoid arthritis and this recoils quite a bit. So let's see how I get with our 357 Magnum, see how close we get to that 1290. So not great velocity. Um, it is a 145 grain, so it's not like this is a 125 grain velocity. So it's yeah, it's not great, but it's not too terrible either. Now our 45 ACP, we are rated at 1,000 feet per second, likely through a five inch barrel. Let's see how close I get to 1,000 feet per second in my short barrel shield 45. Seventy-eight, eight seventy-four, eight seventy-two, eight fifty-three, eight eighty-eight. So uh, a little bit less velocity in critical defense, but it's right in that range of what I saw with critical defense. So not too bad. Let's see if we get when we hit our ballistics gel block now. All right, first up, we'll do our best potential shot, which is just a shot in the plain clear ballistics that gives us our best potential to get hollow point expansion because there's no fabric in the way that can clog that hollow point. Our best potential to get good penetration because there's no rib simulation to slow down that penetration. So let's see what we get with our 357 Magnum. 1290. 45 ACP. Go take a look. All right, so I kind of thought this was going to happen with the 45 simply because I did test the 45 one other time through my 5.3 inch Glock and I got massive expansion 
and not very deep penetration. So I was thinking if I test it in the short barrel, one of two things is gonna happen. One, either it's going to uh, limit that expansion a little bit and penetrate a little bit deeper, or it's gonna expand just as big and because there's less velocity, penetrate a little bit less. And it looks like we're seeing the penetrate a little bit less thing going on. So in our first three inches, ton of energy dump with both of these. A little bit more with our 357 Magnum than our 45, but both look really good. And we have good damage in there. And that's some, something I don't always see is good cutting damage in there. And I've seen that with both of them, but I've seen a lot more with the 45. Our 357 Magnum, we have a pretty ideal penetration of about 13 and three quarters. I know Parallax will make that look like it's a little deeper than that, but 13 and three quarters is where we're at. And with our 45 ACP, we were spot on at 12 inches. We just barely made it uh, to our minimum there. So let's put on our fabric and put on our rib simulation and see how these compare in our real world simulation. All right, our real world simulation, four layers of sweatshirt material followed by three inches of clear ballistics that represents hitting a pectoral muscle followed by a quarter inch medium density fiberboard that represents hitting ribs or sternum, 16 more inches of clear ballistics and another quarter inch medium density fiberboard at the back. If I can keep these bullets within uh, that back rib simulation where it doesn't go through that, it's definitely a success and that's what I'm hoping to see. So let's see what we get here with our 357 Magnum through our real world camera. Let me make sure everything's uh, lined up there and then we'll hit it with the uh, 45. All right, 45 ACP, real world simulation. Go take a look. Wow, <laughs> not expecting to see that. Was not expecting to see that. That is awful with that 45. I mean, it's great in some regards, but also awful because we're not getting anywhere near acceptable penetration. Um, if it were close to that 12 inch minimum, I'd be fine with that, but it's not even remotely close. So looking at our first rib simulation, we can definitely see both are expanded. I would say they're both probably expanded to the same percentage bigger but maybe a little bit more percentage with that 45 so yeah that is a big old expansion going on there oh wow and with our 357 magnum we didn't over penetrate we went about as far as i want to see we cracked the back of that rib simulation so yeah that would stay within your average size you know attacker but it would also penetrate very deeply but this is from a front on shot simulation if it were a side shot um it would make a big difference there it wouldn't go quite that deep it wouldn't it wouldn't come close to passing through an average size individual i mean both have you know average energy dump going on there now with the 357 magnum because it cracked out that back rib simulation in our rib simulations at 19 inches you know i'm going to call it 19 and a half 20 inches with our 357 Magnum, but I'm gonna say that's really good performance. Our 45 Auto, this is just, this is sad here. Uh, I'll give it nine inches, which is pretty low. Now, that being said, would this work? Would this be enough penetration with the front on shot? Absolutely. And I think for the average concealed carrier, that's not bad because most of your events are, you know, straight on shots. The reason why, you know, 12 inches, the minimum became a thing was because of law enforcement. They do a lot of that thing where, you know, somebody's running away from them and the cops chasing them and then the person turns and fires at them while they're running. And now the only shot an officer has is these uh, side shots that take up a lot of, you need, you need a lot of penetration to hit something vital. That's really why that was set up that way. But when you're looking at, you know, nine inches, that's still four and a half inches inside of, an, uh, inside of a body Plenty of penetration on a front shot. It's just, you know, a lot of people are not gonna like that. So I'm not saying that the 45 will be ineffective, but it's not gonna be effective in all situations. So big, big difference there. Our 357 mag did a lot better. So let's pull these out of the block, take a close up look at them. Then I'll shoot our steel, see what kind of practical accuracy and shootability I can get with these. 
All right, so here's a close-up look at these bullets going through plain gel, our 357 Magnum and our 45 ACP. So good expansion on that 357. Very, very good. Our 45 ACP, just a massive expansion there. A lot bigger. So there's no wonder why it underpenetrated. Uh, these uh, jackets aren't built all that well, so they do want to fragment out a little bit. But really good expansion overall. Now we look at the ones going through our real world simulation. Um, about as good, but just a little bit smaller. And that's pretty typical for Jack of the Hollow Points to get a little bit smaller going through our real world simulation. So our 357 Magnum got quite a bit smaller versus um, the one through Plain Jowl. So that's why it penetrated so far. Our 45 got a lot smaller, but it's still so large that, yeah, it, it didn't penetrate very well. And there's not a ton of energy to work with. So 45, 357. So not bad. It's just the, the penetration wasn't there. So that's a close-up look at those bullets. All right, 14 yards from the target. So I'm just going to see what kind of practical accuracy these things have. I'm going to get a front sight venture, pop these off as fast. I think I can hit the target. Then do a reload. I like 14 yards because it's the double the distance of your average self-defense situation. But I figure... You know, in the heat of the moment, you're probably only going to be about half as good as what you would be on a good day on the range. So doubling that distance kind of shows me probably what my accuracy would actually be like at seven yards. So let's see how it gets our 367. Get my reload over here on my right side. Oh, Winchester, don't do this to me. Light primer strike or something. Dead round, so I'll be back in a second after waiting for a minute. All right, I'm gonna strike. It is a hard primer, I'm gonna strike it single action. That will probably set off and then I'll keep shooting double action. <laughs> that would be effective. Uh, not the worst ammo I've shot in 357 Magnum for recoil, to be honest, but it is still a 357 Magnum snub nose and not super easy to shoot. So, 45. Let's see how this thing does. So obviously 45 is a lot easier to shoot here, but most people would argue it's not quite as effective. I would argue 45 in general is probably more effective than a nine millimeter and you know, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, uh, but you gotta pick the right ammo. This ammo isn't great. What I can say is in the 357 Magnum, it's not bad. Um, and thus, I want something with a little more penetration than that. That being said, if you hit somebody with one of these square, you know, center mass, is it going to drop them? Probably. Because that's going to do a lot of damage, big expanded hollow point. But, you know, just in all situations, it's might not penetrate. Enough. So, interesting results. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.